Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? How you doing? I pray that you are having the most amazing day today. I pray that all is well with you. Thank you so much for watching the replay. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Monica Knox. I am a Georgia Commission notary. I do uh, notary loan signings and I also do general notary work. So welcome. And if you are an existing subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much. I appreciate you supporting my channel and I appreciate you just overall. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So without further ado, I just wanted to come on real quickly and just do a quick video on errors and emissions insurance. As a notary signing agent, it is a requirement that we have uh, ENO insurance in order to work with some of the title companies and lenders. Um, but it's also important that we know what is and what is not covered. So I'm going to go ahead and start my slideshow. Okay, so the first thing is what do notaries need, or well, why do notaries need ENO insurance? And so, as I said earlier, it is required. It is required by lenders and title companies to carry ENO insurance. And uh, most title companies and lenders only require you to start with at least a $25,000 policy. Okay, and why? So how, how does it protect me? And according to the NNA, I take this, I took this insert from them. Even if you're careful and don't make mistakes, you can still be sued. As a signing agent, many of the documents you notarize are public record, making your seal easily accessible. A thief can copy that impression, create a counterfeit seal, and use that seal to illegally notarize other documents. Your risk is real, why take a chance? So that is so scary to know that our seal can be used um, in, in, for illegal purposes. Like that is so scary to know that. But you know, it is a safety net for us to have. But then again, as I said, we should be aware of what is and what isn't covered. Um, and I also want to note that even um, you can even be held liable for unintentional mistakes years later. Years later, something comes up. As long as you had an active policy at that time, you would be covered if you are ever called into court. Okay. So the next slide is why do I need a surety bond and e insurance? E and O insurance. Well, some states require notaries to have bond and ENO insurance. It is important to understand that your bond is not insurance to for it is not insurance protection for you as a notary. Your notary bond protects the public from financial harm that results from any negligent mistake or intentional misconduct you commit while performing a notarization. If you make an unintentional mistake or omission, or if someone files a false claim against you, it could cost you thousands of dollars to defend yourself in a lawsuit simply to prove you acted responsibly. And if a claim is made against your bond, you're required by law to pay it back. You could also be held personally responsible for any additional costs above the amount of your bond, which might include course costs, legal fees, and other expenses. Wow. So again, it's important to know what is and what is not covered. So if you live in a state that requires you to have bond, just know that the bond is not insurance protection for you. It protects the public. Okay. All right, the next slide. What does ENO insurance cover? According to the National Notary Association, ENO insurance will absorb the cost of claims and lawsuits resulting from the notary's unintentional errors up to the policy limit. Not only will ENO insurance pay out damages to an insured injured party after a court verdict or out of court settlement, but it will also absorb the uh, 
attorney fees, court costs, and other defense costs up to the policy limit. In some circumstances, your policy could be used to repay a loss on your bond. Even if the claim isn't valid, you could still be faced with court costs for defending yourself. Without e &O insurance, uh, these costs could come out of your pocket. So um, I just wanna read this. It says three important things to remember. The first one is notary e &O insurance only covers acts as a notary. It does not cover non-notary tasks performed by signing agents, such as mailing closing checks or delivering completed loan packages. So that's important to know that there are some exclusions to e &O insurance, okay? Now, uh, here are a couple of examples of what uh, e &O insurance does not cover. So again, it does not cover non-notary tasks performed by signing agents, such as mailing closing checks or delivering completed loan packages. E notary e &O policy claims that were denied due to lack of coverage because the notary was performing tasks as a signing agent, not in their official capacity as a notary. So in one case, an Illinois NSA put the wrong loan payoff amount on a closing settlement document he prepared. It was his responsibility to make sure the payoff amount was correct. The mistake caused the seller to lose more than $6,000. This mistake was a result of his duties as a signing agent, not as a notary. So it was not covered under his E and O policy. So another example, a New York notary sent the payoff letter and payoff check back to the wrong title company. This error caused a delay in the closing and damages of more than $3,000. Again, because the damages were a result of the notary's work as a NSA, the claim was denied. And then the final example, in California, a title company alleged that the notary failed to send the closing documents to a lender in a timely manner, causing damages of $90. Since this act fell under the NSA's work as a closing agent, the claim was denied. Now, I'm going to say that this could happen a lot. I've had this happen to me a couple times. When I sent back the package, and it was not received. And a couple of days later, you know, I get a call from the uh, from the the client asking where the package is. And I'm like, well, it's mail. I don't hold any packages. I as soon as that, um, but my scam bats are done. I make a, a effort to get those docs back to UPS and shipped off. I do not want to hold on to anyone's uh, loan packages. So I try to get those out of my hand as quickly as possible. But this last example, that could easily happen to you because you have to realize that these lenders and uh, title companies and, and our clients that we work with, they get so many loan packages back and it could easily get misplaced, placed on someone else's de desk. And, you know, we could be held liable for some reason, but, you know, it's always important that you make sure that you get a tracking receipt when you drop off that a package to FedEx or UPS, you always make sure you get a receipt or you take a picture of the receipt or you take a picture of that tracking number, just anything, just so you will have a reference um, as to proving that you did return that loan package, okay? All right, so just a recap, an e and recap. The NNA notary e &O insurance will pay the claim and legal expenses up to your policy limit. You don't ever have to pay a deductible and you do not have to pay it back. If you are sued, e and insurance will pay legal expenses up to the policy limit. If you are found liable after year, years after, you will be covered as long as the policy was active during that time frame. And also, if you are commissioned in more than one state, you only need one policy, okay? 
Okay, so here is an example. Um, I just put two examples. On the left is the notary, National Notary Association. And on the right is the American Association of Notaries. So you do not have to go through the National Notary Association to obtain your ENO insurance. But, you know, I just wanted to give you an idea. You know, you always want to do your due diligence and find out the best coverage for you. So, for example, um, with the NNA, a four-year term for $20, $25,000 is one hundred nine, And with the American Association of Notaries, the same policy is eighty-seven seventy-five. So that's just, you know, a comparison here. So, you know, do your due diligence and find the best coverage for you. Um, and at, or like I said earlier, you only need 25,000 to start with. However, as you get more experienced and as you get more comfortable doing loan signings, you know, I highly recommend you increase your coverage because a lot of lenders and title companies um, they sometimes require you that you at least have $100,000 sometimes just to work with them. So if you increase your coverage um, and you invest in that, you know, that will open up the door for you to be able to work with more uh, clients. So just uh, food for thought for that. So next slide. So if you're considering adding additional coverage just to fill in the gap, these are two companies here. Um, and you can give them a call, get a quote just to find out how much it will cost just to fill in that gap so that you will feel, have some peace of mind knowing, you know, even the non-notary um, things that you do are covered, okay? So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. Um, and to take a moment, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead, take a moment and hit that subscribe button. Give me a like and let me know how you're doing. Let me know where you are in your notary journey. Have you started? Are you contemplating, thinking about it? Wherever you are, are you seasoned notary? Whatever you are, I enjoy reading your con comments. Um, and I like hearing back from you. So again, thank you so much for watching. Peace and blessings to you. Until next time, God bless you.